Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays for some more uh, Factorio space exploration. And I've been carrying on playing around qu quite a lot with um, Arcospheres and I feel like I've actually made some good progress with it on the last stream. So you'll notice that there's um, a lot more of these combinators scattered around. And so I've, I've, what I've done, I've, I've thought about it a bit more and I've tried to come up with a slightly more intelligent system for dealing with them and keeping them keeping them balanced, keeping them managed. Now the whole system is is frozen at the moment because we've run out of Naquium completely which means the research down here has stopped. We're not making any of the more really exotic things up here. So this whole system has just gone to sleep basically. I have chucked a little bit more in so we'll see if, um, just, just to get this running so you can see what happens. Um, but we'll see if this is, is actually enough to, to make it... Um, make anything interesting happen we'll probably probably find it isn't but never mind so what we had before was I was monitoring the the chest in the middle and if there were none or only one or two of either of the inputs for the um, for one of these one of these folding machines oh there we go here's one running over here now um, then we'd then we'd when we tell it to run because that meant we'd practically run out of it now as you can see it's all running so the machine so the robots are flying around they're trying to keep the um, the science, the the um, all the machines around here loaded up with the various types of arcospheres they want. So down here, for example, we're requesting um, lambdas and size. So they're being brought down, and they're being put in here, and they're being turned into science. They're then all of this then spits out various different types of arcospheres that roll along the belt here, go back into the big chest in the middle, and then these machines watch and to try and decide whether it's going whether it, they need to do, to do any um, any folding in order to turn the arcospheres back into ones that are going to be more useful. Because sometimes if you're not careful, you'll notice that some of them some of them start to increase. You have too many of one type, not enough of another. So at the moment we have a lot of zetas. Um, in fact, I have better just to hover over it. We have a lot of zetas. We have a lot of phi's. But then there's a few. There's not very many gammas. So these machines are going to try and fix that for me. As I say, the way it used to work was we'd watch for their outputs to be too low. So on this one, we watched for gammas and epsilons, and if there weren't, and if there was a massive shortage of either of those, then we'd have the machine run. But that just led to all of them running basically all the time, and it, it just didn't it didn't stay balanced very well, and it also deadlocked from time to time. Um, so instead, I've now come up with what I think is a slightly cleverer system. So if we take this one over here as an example, we've got lambdas and thetas being turned into epsilons and zetas. So we're looking at the lambdas and thetas. For each one of those that's in, again, in the big red chest in the middle, we're saying count that one, multiply by one, output it as a tick. Same for the thetas. So, so we've got a count coming out of here that is the number of thetas plus the number of lambdas. We're then subtracting the number of zetas and the number of epsilons because those are the outputs of it. And so this, the idea of this is we're saying, um, and then we compare over here, we're, we're saying if that's greater than two, so if there's two more of the inputs than there are of the outputs in total because anything else would be a bit too complicated at the moment then start running and that so that suggests that if we've got a lot more it's basically the idea is if we've got more of the inputs than we have of the outputs then the system will run and it will it will fold them and it will take us so it will take in those two and it will output the ones that we need to uh, we want to turn into uh, that, that we want them to be turned into and hopefully that'll gradually bring it closer and closer to balance and so we've got eight recipes all the way around here, all doing exactly the same thing. So this one's looking, this one's watching for gammas and size and theta, zetas and lambdas again, um, and again doing the same sort of. If these are, if there's more of these than there are of these, then run. Same for this one. Same for this one. Same for, same for all of them. And that, as you can see, looking at the numbers over there on the right, is quite good at keeping it balanced. So we've got, um, we've there got ten of each one, except for lambdas, which we've got eight of. And I reckon that's close enough to balanced. So I'm, I'm happy with that. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that um, as it is. Um, so that works quite nicely when you're doing the uh, the science recipes down here because these the, these seem to be these these recipes and the folding recipes seem to be fairly well balanced together and that was working quite nicely um, initially. Um, in fact, it was working on the even simpler version initially, but then I had to come along and put in the Naquim processor production and the Naquim tesseract production, and they're a bit more complicated. So whereas these ones will take in two and output two different ones. Um, and so I put a pair of anyway. It seems to be that, that that a lot of thought has been put into making these ones balance more easily, and then these ones not be quite so well balanced. So this this one, for example, takes in lots of different ones, and then outputs lots and lots of size. Um, this one takes in a variety of different ones, outputs a variety of different ones. But it seems to be a they don't seem to work together with the folders quite as nicely. And so that has meant I've then had to introduce the inversion recipes over here. These ones take in four different arcospheres and output four different arcospheres. So they they turn four of them into the other four of them, and the and then one one does it one way around, the other does it the other way around. So that's 
fairly straightforward. And so that, but the, when you start doing the more complicated recipes, it seems that you need these as well in order to keep it balanced. Because when I didn't have these and just was just using this as it is now, the system kept deadlocking. I'd fill up completely on phi's or completely on thetas, and and the system would grind to a halt, and nothing would work. So. Yes, it needed some work doing. This has now made it significantly better and, and to the point now that it seems to be working, except for the shortage of Naquium, which I shall get into in a bit. Again, across the top of here, I've got a row of arithmetic combinators. They work in exactly the same way as these ones over here. There's just more of them because these deal with all eight types of arcspheres instead of just four of them. So along here, we've got, we're adding up the zetas, the thetas, the gammas, and the omegas, and then subtracting the lambdas, the xis, the epsilons and the phi's. And so we were then feeding that to both of these because they're, they're mirror images of each other. I can then have one of them watching to see if the number is greater than eight, the other one watching to see if it's less than minus eight. So if there's a big imbalance, then these will start to run. But if they're just, if they're fairly close, like within eight, um, then then it'll sit happily. And at the moment, the imbalance is at about is at two, which is which makes sense because if we, as we, when we looked over here, you can see there, there's ten of absolutely everything except the lambdas, which is which there's eight of. So you've got an imbalance of two in there. And yeah, so this this keeps it this keeps it balanced over here. The, the only problem with this system is we have quite a lot of these chests around here, which have archospheres in them. So this one has a couple in there that are waiting to be turned into uh, into science. This one has a four four in there because it's always requesting those. The inserter only runs when it needs them, but th they do tend to fill up the chest. And that means a slight drain on the archosphere system and a few more that aren't in circulation in, in, in being stirred around. Now, I did come up with or rather somebody on chat suggested something which I, I don't know how much of it was their idea, how much of it was then my, my, my adaption of their idea. But it was certainly certainly they sparked the thought was what if for this this one, this machine is supposed to stop if the if the uh, Naquium processors ever get backs up all the way up to here, uh, sorry, all the way up to here, because having it still running would be a waste of archospheres and they probably all end up jammed up in the output side of here so that would be a problem it would be a load of archospheres jammed taken out of circulation and yeah that that that, that causes problems with the trying to balance them so what i'm doing here is i'm reading the uh, the number of um naquium processors on the on the belt here and if it's ever not zero it passes a signal up tier to to this 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 decider combinator which says if it's if it is zero, then pass through the inputs. If it's not zero, then don't pass through the inputs. And the inputs in this question, in this case, are what basically all of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of the, the seven of the archospheres that are required for this machine to run, and that's passed then onto this um, requester chest that will only request what's on the from what's on the network. So if this if this backs up all the way to here then this chest will stop requesting any more archosphere. It'll run once more, maybe twice more, and there might be a few left over in here. But the basic idea is that we won't have 10, 15, 20, well, okay, 7, 14, 21 of the archospheres jammed up in this in this uh, gravimetric facility because most of them will have been spat back out onto the system on, on, on running, running around here and going back in, into here. As you can see, we've currently got 78 archospheres in the storage here, and then a load more scattered around in all the machines, which is, it's okay. I mean, I would like it to be more, but at the moment it's enough for the system to work. So I'm, uh, yeah, it's, bas it's basically okay. So yes, archospheres, I think I've, I, I hesitate to say that I've cracked archosphere processing. However, I do feel like I've got to a point where it is working and I'm, basically happy with it i think it's it, it, it it's working at the moment further further testing is required i think and before i'm prepared to show, before i'm prepared to tell anyone about it and say hey this is the a, a definitive way to do arcsphere processing i'd i'd like to leave it running for an amount of time first and make sure it doesn't jam up and make sure everything's just just happy and probably in fact finish the game and make sure it's still still all happy <laughs> but in the interest of getting more arcospheres I have now been out. I, I sent my um, my long range ship, the Donut, out to the Crystal Collective, to Icefield, to Rocky Ridge, to Pebbles, and to Grape Shot, and then it was starting to run a bit low on um, on Ion Stream fuel, so I decided to send it home again. But that does mean I've now picked up another 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 Arcospheres from all of those, plus a few more deep space ones. 
and they've been brought back and and thrown into the mix as well. So we've got that. I, I, every, I am gradually gathering more and more archospheres. So as you can see, if we look at this one, I've gained five from here. I've gained five from here and so on. I did this area in a previous stream. I now so I think next time I'll probably come over here and maybe try and get these four. Because I've already been to Caltrops, and then maybe some of these around the top. I don't know. It's getting to the point where it's. I've done all the ones that are bunched together, so that the ship is having to fly a bit further between them. At some point, eventually, I guess I'll, I'll get to the point where I've done basically all of them, and I'll just have to send the ship off to sit sit somewhere and just and 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 collect archospheres from as just as many as it can from one place by just chucking out more and more and more and more. Um, probes but that's going to be rather expensive in probes so ideally I'd like to get the easy ones the low-hanging fruit fruit first I've also done a bit of shipbuilding so I this this drove me up the wall a fair few times I have to admit um, it was a bit it was a struggle to try and get this working and I needed I needed to give my brain a bit of a rest a few times so I went off and I decided I'd build a, a military lander ship and the idea is that this ship it's it's not finished as you can probably tell by the fact that it looks a bit unfinished <laughs> um, the idea is that this ship can go out and just land on a hostile alien planet and defend itself so it's got shields all the way around the gap here is just because these two are turned off um, these two are turned off sorry so I'll turn them back on again at some point but I need to build underneath where they were um, but it's got shields to protect it from the stop the, for the to, to uh, stop the biters just running in and gnawing on it. It's got um, lasers to defend against the biters. It's got an artillery in the middle to scare off the biters and, keep, and pummel them. And it's got all of this um, thermal stuff around the outside here in order to keep in order to keep everything powered, everything running happily. And I think this should be should probably be okay. And um, this is now up to full temperature, which is nice. Oh, and that that means I should, while I think of it, um, redirect the beam to point at this ship. But I'll do that to, in, in a bit. So, yes, this is now... The idea of this, though, as you may notice, it doesn't have any engines. It's got a couple of booster tanks over here, so it can take off from planets and from space stations, but it doesn't have any engines. And the idea... What I wanted to do with this was build a essentially a tug that would attach to it, and that would drag it to orbit around the planet I wanted to invade, and then this could drop down and land there. And the reason I'm doing it like that is because that means I don't need to build all of... Uh, I don't need to... I don't need to land with all of the engines and all of the infrastructure for carrying, um, for dealing with all of that on a random hostile planet. I can just go down with just this, this little ship, um, which means it'll be a lot cheaper to take off again. Now, it has just occurred to me that maybe I'd be better off putting all of this stuff on the other ship and having accumulators or steam tanks or something like that, but I think these are going to use quite a lot of power, so I think I'm probably better off having the massive massive thermal battery on this ship maybe I'll power the other one off this this one so it doesn't need quite as much so the other one doesn't need to be quite so big uh, that seems like an idea anyway but that's something I'm working on because I know there are a lot a lot more of the pyramids and other artifacts out around the galaxy that need to be investigated so at some point I would like to go out and have, have a look at those but not just yet now the eagle-eyed among you, and it's a phrase I keep using, <laughs> will have noticed that the uh, booster tanks on here aren't rocket fuel ones. These are actually antimatter booster tanks because I've, I've done enough research now that I can start using antimatter drives on all of my um, on my spaceships if I want to. Now I'm probably not going to go in and edit ones like this that are already fully functional and just and just work TM. However, for making new ships like this one and anything else I decide I want to make in the future, I think they're going to be quite nice to have. So down here I've made a little facility that pulls in all the bits and pieces that are needed to make the uh, the, the antimatter engines and the antimatter um, booster tanks. I've had a bit of a look at how these work and they do still have a fairly significant power draw. It's not, not as high as the ion engines. They draw, I think, I think these draw 10 megawatts. The ion engine, the antimatter engines draw 1 megawatt. But it's still a it's still a significant amount, so I think I'm still probably going to want to have a system like this on all of the spaceships, just to give them enough, that, that, just to give them a bit of extra power to keep them running, keep them, um, so, so, so they're not relying on, well they can't rely on solar because they're going to go out, outside the solar system. They can't rely on, I don't want to rely on having um, accumulators in them because accumulators are generally a bit rubbish. They don't hold very much energy for the amount of space they take up. Uh, and there's no point in just going out with tanks of steam because you still need basically all of this, nearly all of this infrastructure in order to turn that back into, into electricity. So I think this is basically the best system you can do. The alt the other alternative actually is to put in an antimatter reactor in here instead of the instead of the energy beam receiver and that can burn the same fuel as the rest of the ship at that point and produce heat from it. But again you still need all of this stuff around the edge so 
it's not really much of a saving. You might as well just you might as well use the free energy from the energy beam receiver um, rather than pay, rather than having to pay in inverted commas to make the antimatter, which costs resources. So I think I'm going to stick with this basic design. It'll just be a case of replacing the engines across the back and the, and the fuel tanks across here and whatever fuels the ship up. So I suppose when I put it like that, actually upgrading these ships to take to, to antimatter engines isn't actually going to be all that difficult. So maybe I should just just do it. We'll see. Speaking of messing around with ships, I, when this ship came back from doing some Naquium drop-offs, I decided I wanted to. Uh, I, I needed to repurpose it for something. So, for one of the for the, for the various researches for Deep Space Science Four, um, uh, no, that one, and then this one, interstellar travel data. You need to put a Nexus on a spaceship and then fly it through the interstellar void. And the faster you go, the more power it uses but also the more data it generates. So by the look of it, because it says um, energy use is proportional to speed and data is data generation is is based on, so presumably proportional to the kinetic energy, that um, because kinetic energy is MV squared, that means if you double the speed of your ship, you're gonna get four times as much data for, twi but for only twice as much energy. So that seems like a, a worthwhile thing to do. So I think I'm gonna need to build a very, very fast ship with an enormous amount of power generation, which this is not, but this is this is a sort of a going out and just testing it to see what happens because I want to find I want to find out how much energy we're talking about how much data we're talking about and then use those sort of use that sort of general impression to then build up something that will do do what I need it they will they'll go out and, and go a bit faster get the data nice and quickly and so on and just get a feel for how much I'm going to need to do so it says here it takes 10,000 seconds but because it says it changes the amount of the amount of t uh, time taken changes with speed um, I'm assuming that's then going to that's just going to then be multiplied or divided by a very large but divided by the speed or some speed and some constant. But I need to, I need to basically I need to put in some chests to load this up and unload it and just go out and have a play and see what happens. However, I can't actually do that yet. I can't do this recipe. There are if I click on this, um, we'll see there are no recipes available for this thing because I've researched the Nexus, but I haven't actually researched Deep Space Science Catalog Four yet. Um, because that's still on the to-do list. It's, it's, it's being done, and it's being done rather, rather slowly at the moment. Um, so until I've done that, I can't actually go off and do that testing, which is a bit of a shame. So this ugly lump on the side of the ship is just sitting there at the moment and not doing anything useful. But soon, once this is done, I'll be able to go out and do that and, and then start working on Deep Space Science 4. So the problem with the science at the moment is... Well, the problem is that Deep Space Science 4 is incredibly mean. It uses catalogs, it uses packs 1, 2, and 3, which means there's an enormous load on the on the catalog on the science pack 1 making machine because it's making them to head off down to the um, down to be scienced. It's also passing them up to be turned into science pack 2s. The science pack 2s are going off to be scienced and going up to be turned into science pack 3s. So we need an enormous quantity of these ones being made, and we just aren't. Well, we we ha I thought we just aren't. We just haven't been because. We ran out of Naquium, but now we seem to have got some Naquium again, so it's actually starting to run, which is quite nice. Um, so this seems to be basically kicking in and starting to behave itself again, and the science packs are all being made, albeit a bit slowly. So if we have a look down here, yeah, we've got we've got ones and twos here, so it's currently it's, it is currently threes we're short of, but those are being fed down. So the science is getting done; it's just getting done a little bit gradually because. We're a bit, I'm a bit short of science packs at the moment, mostly due to the Naquim shortage, which has caused backlogs of problems all the way back up, all the way back up the Wasp name. So, why was there a Naquim shortage? Well, it was, I'm slightly embarrassed to admit it, because it was a bit of a stupid reason. But um, I had this ship. So, <laughs> it essentially, this ship was set up to only... What was it? what was it? There was something with all these all these configured inserters down the middle here were were being a bit stupid. So the ship had had arrived at the other end in um, in Realm of Shadows, and this and had got to the point where somehow it had managed to load up with the crushed Naquium, um, to the point where there was this this container was completely full of crushed Naquium, but there's still a bit of sulphur and iron left in this 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 warehouse, and that meant the whole thing sort of bogged down ground to a halt because it couldn't couldn't finish unloading the iron and sulfur and therefore it couldn't finish loading the crushed aquatite and so it just got stuck and sat there and i think the problem occurs when this warehouse is more than 
um, so when, when this warehouse overflows back into this one with the sulfur and the iron. So if the ship flies out with sulfur, just sulfur and iron in this warehouse, then it's okay. It's going to be able to unload it fine, not a problem. But if there's some in both of them, then you can get to a point where there isn't enough, where the, the naquium gets put into here first and doesn't, and then you can't get the iron and sulfur out of here into this one. And it all jams up. So possibly I should make these not start inserting until there's no sulfur in here. In fact, that, that'd be quite a good way to fix it. What if, so yeah, that's not a bad idea. So if I go through and, and, and unset all of the filters on here, but tell this not to start loading until, certainly until this one's empty, that would work. Until there's no iron, until there's no sulfur in that one, and just hope the iron goes out first, because there's always a lot less iron than there is sulfur because of the way it gets used up. That might that might do it. I'll have to have a play around with that in the next stream. Um, I'm a little bit curious as to why this hasn't launched yet. What's it waiting for? Oh, it's waiting for the oh, it's waiting for the crushed naquium to get down to zero. There is no crushed naquium. What? If crush naquium equals zero, then output a tick, and it's not outputting a tick. Why is there some... Where, where is there some crush naquium? That's being red. Oh, I know what the problem is. At the other end, here, we've unloaded a bit of... We, in a sort of emergency, to, in order to get rid of it, to get the ship to launch again. We've, I unloaded a little bit into here. Oh no, that's so stupid. Um, okay, in order to fix this for now, I'm going to do this and this and this, and just take this one out of out of the system. So now we'll find if we go back to here, that will be the ship just leaving there, as we as we heard, and then the other one's come back in and is now now doing the unloading. So, right, that yeah, that's a bit of a a ridiculous problem to have, but I'll have to get, I'll have to go in and, and, and actually fix that properly in the next stream. So yes, next stream, you'll have to come along and um, join me for that. I'll be on next Wednesday at uh, seven thirty UK time. Come along, watch watch me fix that problem and many other ones besides, and investigate how how well I can what, what blah, 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 and investigate sending out this nexus and how much power and how power it draws and all that sort of fun stuff. So we'll get that all running and, and get it get that going nicely. We'll sort out these sort of problems as well, and and I'll put in the fix for these um, these inserters that I was talking about because I know what, I know how I'm going to do that now. Um, and of course, this video will be the, the next one of these videos will be out next Sunday, so remember that we've got the um, Minecraft on streams on Mondays and videos on Saturdays. And I think I finally got to the point where I'm going to actually have some GTA videos running again next week. So uh, yeah, something else to look forward to. <laughs> so. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you for um, all of the stuff that goes on next week, and um, especially in the, especially the Factorio stream. I'll see you then. <laughs>